Captain. Well, for now, we've got the market concentrating on the good news, it seems. Uh, globally, Friday's employment data was being heavily anticipated. What are you making of the reaction here where the unemployment rate is still pretty high, jumping 9.7%? I think, you know, you've hit the nail on the head. There's good news, there's bad news. We had good job numbers, we had bad unemployment numbers. But you can see from the market, you can see by the sentiment that people are choosing to interpret the good numbers and take heart from those and are slightly shrugging off the, the less than positive numbers and the negativity. So the, bear mar the, sorry, the bull market sentiment seems to be continuing. Well, that having been said, there's a theory out there that, uh, you know, when we see increased levels of volatility, it implies that we're, we've reached the peak of whatever uh, prolonged cycle we've been through. In this case, mm. it's been the bear run. Seeing that there has been a rise in volatility of late, how much merit does this argument hold in your books? <laughs> You know, that's a tricky one. We've had a significant be other bear market rally or, or we've turned back into the bull market. It's hard to say which. The spike in volatility we saw last week uh, led one to believe that a lot of people were nervous we'd seen the end of the rally. Um, however, looking into the close of the week, how we closed on Friday, how we've opened today, um, and volatility has actually come back a significant amount since that spike. So one could actually say that it might have been a bit of a false start mm -hmm. and um, it looks like we might push through on the on the upside. Talking about pushing through, I mean, looking at the RAND, it's past that uh, 770 level, which was a key support level, and then 760 as well. What, of, what are you making of the movements we're seeing, uh, seeing on this front within this broader context that you've just outlined? You know, I think also just chatting to the currency guys, it's broad-based strength across all emerging market currencies. You can also see the strength in the euro. And really, for me, it's a continuation of the theme. Um, it's buying into emerging market economies, it's buying into growth, it's a sustainable, or it's a continuation of this sort of bull market push that we've had for the past couple of months. Well, domestic data had a lot to play with this move lower that we've seen. I mean, the current account deficit mm. figures last week touching a five-year high, but some have argued that this will probably be the best in the cycle and that they're looking for a bounce back to about 5.1% in the third quarter and this trend worsening into 2010. So what's your view on the sustainability of our own economic data that we've seen come to the fore? Look, I think our economic data is turning the corner and we are lagging the rest of the world as we know. Um, but if, as our consumer spending picks up, as the economy turns around, so that current account deficit will widen. So I, I think you're quite right in that um, we may well have seen the, the best of it. Um, but certainly our market can sustain a, an uptick provided we are led by the global markets. Mm -hmm. For now, looking at the RAND, giving it some support has been that gold price. We're hovering just below 1,000 there. Mm. What's your outlook on, the, on that front and the support uh, moves on on that front could offer the local unit moving forward yes you know gold you can interpret the gold strength in many ways uh, it either means people are looking at inflation seeing markets turn around seeing growth come back and they're buying gold as a safe haven against that or they're treating it as a as a commodity coupled with the other basket of commodities and and they're looking for growth across all markets so I actually think it's really a positive sign, even though um, it's often been seen as a safe haven in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking at uh, data we saw out this morning, a sharp rise in net reserves in August, but this mainly due to the IMF's SDR rather than because of Saab involvement in the market. Do you see the mm -hmm. bank being active uh, in the market in the month ahead, given that we are sitting at new lows? You know, I think the bank's going to maintain its policy of uh, non-intervention. And I don't think we'll see too much um, activity from the Saab in the market. 